If you are the adult child of narcissistic parents, you're going to be very familiar with the shame spiral because it's this escalation of feelings beginning with shame that spiral you down into self-blame and self-judgment and fear and so many different emotions that make you feel horrible. And you may say that a lot, like, oh, I feel horrible. I feel so bad that those kinds of feelings come up a lot when you've been raised by a narcissistic parent. So in this video, what I'm going to talk about is healing the shame spiral because it's something that we become very familiar with. We do often and we do all on our own, even when our narcissistic parents are no longer in the house with us. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth. I am a transpersonal psychologist, a holistic nutritional chef, and best-selling author of Get Well Now, Heal Yourself with Food and the Power of the Mind. It's a holistic handbook to help you heal the whole person. And what I do is I help ACONs, adult children of narcissists who've been conned into believing all this stuff about themselves that's not true, to go from being a wounded ACON to being a healed icon. And what's an icon? An icon is somebody who's independent, confident, original, and naturally you. And I can help you do that in my Iconic Me coaching program. In my online course, Healing the Five Primary Wounds of Parental Narcissistic Abuse. So let's get on with it. So what are some ways that you can help yourself to heal the shame spiral? that moment when you just feel all of this shame and it just, these feelings just escalate and get worse and worse and all the self-blame and then rumination and all of the, the inner talk about being a horrible person, which you know isn't really the truth of you. How do you heal all of that? Well, first of all, it's possible. So that's good to know, right? So you have to remember something about narcissistic abuse. It is a shame-driven disorder. And what the narcissistic person is doing is they've created this outer shell idea or this image of who they want themselves to be and who they're pretending they are. And they're projecting that image to pretty much everyone around you. Um, but if you are close in with the narcissist, they're projecting all of the shame that they're not willing to look at themselves. They're not willing to look at their own shame. They're not willing to work through their shame. They're projecting that shame onto you. And if you're empathic and sensitive, kind and loving and caring and all of those things, it's so much harder for you because your function is what I call a shame sponge. And you'll feel like you're just sponging in all of this shame and you'll feel bad most of the time. And this shame can lead to illness. And this is exactly what happened to me. The shame leads to illness. Now they've actually measured shame on the scale of consciousness. And on this scale, shame is the densest of all of the emotions. And they've measured these emotions based on hertz or sound frequency waves. And it's 20 hertz. It's, it's like super dense. It's hard to move. But shame is the most important one to move. It's the most important one to move out of your system to help you feel better, to help you get well. And it's definitely what helped me get well, because it was an emotion that really had taken over my life and I have to really work with. And if you are the adult child of a narcissist, you're going to have to work with shame too. So the first thing I want you to do is start noticing and you should keep a journal about this, but start noticing what you're shaming yourself about. You may be shaming yourself about n never being on time. You may shame yourself about um, being bad at organization. You're bad at making decisions. You're shaming yourself around that. You may be shaming yourself around your weight, um, always thinking you need to lose more weight and you feel awful because you know part of your shame spiral is you lose a few pounds and then you reward yourself with ice cream or something and then you start gaining the weight and they feel bad. So you may be shaming yourself for things that you're doing or not doing. Um, you may be shaming yourself for, self for drinking too much or um, spending too much time watching TV or there's so many things that we can spend time shaming ourselves around and putting ourselves down and making ourselves feel worse than we already do. One of the things that you will deal with as the adult child of a narcissist, um, or if you're in relationship with a narcissist, is you're going to deal with this, this disparity between good and bad. 
Am I a good person? Am I a bad person? I, I can't figure out which because you're being blamed and you're having shame projected on you. You're pulling in their shame. You're taking responsibility for their shame and you're being blamed and taking responsibility for all kinds of things that you didn't do. Chances are great that you're also apologizing a lot for things that you never did just to try to get them to stop being on you, to leave you alone. It's a terrible way to live. And so this internal fight that you have around being a good person or a bad person is it's real to you, but it's really painful as well. So let's just start with this bad person thing. That's shame. When you feel that horrible feeling, that's shame. When you feel guilty about whatever it is that you think you did or you were told you did or you didn't do, that is shame and guilt and those two those two emotions are the best of friends and those two will come together very often to take you down make no mistake shame and guilt are poisons to your system so if you're recognizing now this is how i do my shame spiral so just really start taking notes notice yourself in your reality and how are you dealing with shame what are you shaming yourself about? What are the emotions that take you down that pike? And what place do you go to? What thoughts do you go to at the end of the shame spiral? Do you go to, and like this is really deep and really difficult, but a lot of us go to this, like I, I just want out, you know? Like I, I wanna end it all, I wanna end my life. If you get to that in your shame spiral, you are not alone in this, but you will need help. You will need expert help to help you get out of this shame spiral and help you heal it. So like I said, that first one is going to be about noticing your own shame spiral. What do you do? What are the things you feel ashamed of and that you know that you could change? You start making changes on something like, well, I'm late all the time and I'm always ashamed when I walk into the room and I'm late and I feel awful. So there's that that shame feeling, that horrible feeling that comes up for you. Um, so, but that's something that you can change. You can start setting your alarm to go sooner to make sure that you leave things sooner. You can just start training yourself to be on time or be early for things. Just start scheduling everything to be earlier. So just notice what you're doing and start to actively participate in a solution that can help you dial back on that shame spiral. Um, maybe you start to feel ashamed of something and you go run and get a bunch of cookies. Stop yourself from going to the cabinet. Stop buying the cookies, things like that. There are so many things that you can do. Just start getting creative about things that you can do to help yourself, to care for yourself, and to be kind to yourself, and to help begin the process of healing the shame spiral. The second thing I really want you to do is start getting very honest with yourself about your own shame spiral and about how you participate in it how maybe you make it worse for yourself by doing things that you know are harmful to yourself. Maybe you make it worse for yourself by being manipulative towards others. Um, and you use those manipulations to try to make yourself feel better. The more honest you can be with yourself, the better off it's going to be for you. And I mean, being honest with yourself about the stuff that you do that maybe isn't so cool to self or to others, but especially to yourself. We do so many things to ourselves as adult children of narcissists. We're often so mean to ourselves just in the way we talk to ourselves. You can be putting yourself down for so many different things in your life, but until you become really conscious about those things that you're doing, you're going to keep doing them unconsciously over and over and over again. So when I say get honest with yourself, this is not always easy to do because you have been trained by a narcissistic parent in advanced smoke and mirrors. They are experts at smoke and mirrors. They're experts at gaslighting, lying, manipulating, maneuvering, trying to get what they want, using you to get what they want, um, using you as their basic slave to get them to do everything that they want you to do. And so you looking at yourself honestly may not be an easy thing to do at first. It's not really an easy thing to do at all, but it's so helpful to be honest with yourself about places where you can change behaviors in your life that 
can be empowering to you instead of disempowering to you. We will participate in these shame spirals until we start to become conscious of what they are, how they developed, and then how we can release them, how we can let them go so they can they no longer have hold on us. Releasing the shame is one of the most beautiful things you can do for yourself because it can unburden you from that density of feeling horrible all the time. So the third thing that you're really going to need to do, but before I get to this third thing that will really help you with your shame spiral, if any of this stuff is resonating with you, please go ahead and like, please subscribe to my channel, and go ahead and put anything in the comments below that you would like to talk about, something that may have come up for you, um, something that you would recommend, if you've worked through your shame spirals and something that helped you, let's help each other below in the comments by having a real community forum where we can talk about the shame and that role it has played in our lives and how we can heal that too. The third thing I'm going to mention that you can do to help you with healing the shame spiral is seeking help. Seek help from somewhere to help you heal from the pain from the density that shame can bring to your life. Now, if you've done a ton of traditional psychotherapy and you feel like you've hit a wall with that, then someone like me could be very helpful for you to help you release the emotional root cause, release the energy of shame from your body so that you have more energy available to you to be able to do the things that you want to do. Um, also, to watch your body heal in that process. So I created a technique called whole person integration technique that helps you do just that. Release this old, it's like uninstalling this old app of shame that isn't working anymore and installing the app that you'd really want to have in there. And so you may want to feel peace. You may, you may want to feel love. You may want to feel compassion, kindness, self-compassion, caring. All of those emotions are what we want to feel and we all have access to them but as long as we're sitting in the shame and the shame is running the show and running the show with those thoughts feelings and beliefs that just keep recycling over and over and over again as long as you're doing that it will work against you and so seeking help will work for you. So there's all kinds of ways to do that. There's somatic therapies. There's this, like somatic psychotherapy like I do. Um, there's coaching. There's group coaching. There's online group support groups. Um, there's my online course, Healing the Five Primary Wounds or Parental Narcissistic Abuse that can help you release some of those energetic bonds that you have with your parents with your narcissistic parents even long after you've left and even long after they've passed away so there are a lot of things that you can do to help yourself heal from the shame spiral get creative and tell us down below in the comments like what worked for you what didn't work for you because uh, there's so many things out there and there's tons of modalities and every modality works it may not work for you but when you develop that kind of feeling of I'm going to stop at nothing. I'm going to keep working on myself. I'm going to keep uh, working on releasing the shame. I'm going to keep working on bringing to the, the conscious mind the subconscious reasons why I'm doing this. The better off that you're going to be. You're going to feel so much more empowered. You're going to feel lighter and freer and happier. Your body will get well. Your mind will get well. Your heart will get well. And you'll feel so much better in your life. Um, and if this is sounds good to you, you can also book a free call with me. Uh, it's a free call and mini reading to talk about my Iconic Me coaching program and other things that I have available to you to help you heal from parental narcissistic abuse and from your own shame spiral and help you to get well now. I'm Dr. Meg Hayworth, and I thank you so much for listening to the end. I hope this information will help you get well now.